Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's sort of interesting to watch the minister leave as an American company gets up and talks. Uh, but the good news is that um, it's a, it is a real pleasure to be here, and I want to talk about technology, and everybody will at this point yawn. Um, but I want to make it very simple, because I think technology is about 21st century infrastructure. I don't think it's about, I don't think it's about rebooting your PC, let's put it that way. But I guess some of you don't even know who Oracle are. Um, occasionally people still ask me about the shopping centre in Reading, which is a bit embarrassing as I'm actually based in Reading, um, but not in the shopping centre. Uh, very rarely these days do people um, think that we are the failed teletext provider. Um, what, we actually, what we actually are is we're a fairly large organisation. In fact, we're the world's largest enterprise software company. And we turn over, well, in our last fiscal year, which actually finished in May 2009, obviously we finished the fiscal year in May 2010, but we're not talking about those numbers quite yet. Um, we turned over $23.5 billion, right? It's significantly greater than that in this year because we, we also took over a company called Sun Microsystems, which is a hardware company, in that year as well. But we are a very large player in many large organisations. And we're number one in lots and lots of different areas, and I'm sure you're terribly interested in that. But the interesting thing is that one is that we have 345,000 customers. Um, of various different organisational size, from various very small to very large, including government and the BBC, and many of you in here, I'm sure. Um, but we also employ a lot of people. In fact, now we employ about 125,000 people. But we have 5 million people who develop in our, inside our technology as well. So why is this important? Right? Well, firstly, we believe that technology is the thing that drives business. We think that technology can help people change into this, whatever you want to call it, the virtual world. But if you are going to be successful in the technology business, you've got to keep investing. So we've been investing significant amounts of money, well over $3 billion a year, to try and generate this software and this hardware which will help you run your business, not spend all your time rebooting your PCs. And I guess it's sort of interesting. Because it all depends on what you think infrastructure is. And I think most of us believe that roads are infrastructure in one form or another. I think some people, and I've heard some of it already today, is that think that buildings, maybe not quite as dramatic as the Gazprom building, but buildings are part of infrastructure. And I'm sure people think that pipes, whether they be containing water or whether they be containing anything else, are part of infrastructure. But how many people really think that computers are part of infrastructure? How many people actually genuinely think that if you're going to go through a regeneration scheme, you've got to think about this stuff in the same way as you think about this stuff? And I think the risk is that we just don't. We just don't think about it in the same way. And the net result of that over the last 20 or 30 years has been extremely significant. Because it's not just about computers. All the things that get discussed, whether, we're, whether, whether Alan Yontop is talking about creative, or whether we're talking about media cities, or whether we're talking about on-demand TV, or whether we're talking about Google TV, which is another generation maybe, it's actually all about data. Everything is about data. Because without the data, you don't have any virtual world. The whole purpose of having this data is to be able to deliver it in whichever way. It frankly doesn't matter whether it's a piece of creative film or it's some business intelligence to help run the budgets. It's still all about data and manipulating it. And that's sort of quite interesting because the IT challenge for transformation is relatively straightforward. I mean, you've got to build better IT services for your business to meet the business plan. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? But you've also got to do it while managing the day-to-day -day challenges. And when we go through transformations, my observation is, we think that the second one will stop whilst the first one happens. The trouble is the second one never stops. Now, when you consider that between 80 and 90% of all IT spending is just keeping the lights on, <coughs> just keeping the lights on, 
So there's very little left to actually do the investment. So it's got to become a much more strategic challenge about how do we think differently from what we've done, uh, what we've done previously. And of course, when we're talking about regeneration, when we're talking about transforming an area or a business, we have to think strategically. We have to think where things are going to go. Now, here's sort of an interesting point that came out of McKinsey's. Now, McKinsey's make the point. Data centers, and I can see most of you can't think of anything worse than talking about data centers, but data centers are where a lot of this data is held. They're growing very quickly. They're at least 25% of the total IT budget. They're, they're increasing at 20% a year. However, budgets are flat, and the, and the level of service execution is too low. Data, this thing that I think is all important, is growing at least twice per year. It's an exponential growth of data, which is happening in every industry right now. If you do not plan for data to be available, if you do not plan for networks to move that data around, if you do not plan for an environment, everything will stop. We've already seen this in certain industries. We've seen it in certain areas around financial services where the inability to be able to move quickly have had a material effect on the businesses and the way things actually happen. So this is a problem which we've got to think about, whether you think about it in existing world terms or you think about it in regeneration terms. And actually it's because the industry is changing that we have to think about this. If you're as old as I am and you can remember computing in 1980, the reality was it was just making things go quicker. You did exactly the same things, they just did them a bit quicker. We then moved through enterprise processes. Some of you will go, have gone through the very boring process of re-designing re, um, your organization to try and make those processes a bit better. And then we moved into the, into the internet. And that was when the world started changing. Because the reality is some of those words like communication and collaboration become fundamentals in the way that we operate. Can any of you imagine running your private or your working life without the internet? It's really hard then. Actually, the, the, we, we don't believe that you can't find out everything from the internet one way or the other. But when you start thinking about it in terms of moving vast quantities of data, it starts getting quite an interesting problem. One of my clients collects two billion records of information every day. But by analyzing that in a way which makes sense, he reckons that he can become a month earlier in going to market than his nearest competitor. He thinks the data gives him a pure month. But he has to have the, the, the technology to do it. And the internet has enabled some of those technologies. But now, some of the next generation technologies which you have to plan for in a regeneration environment have got to take account of one, by the time any redevelopment has happened, how much data will be flying around these buildings. If it's doubling every year, and this may take, what, three or four years, the amount of data flying around has got to be planned for has got to be at least 16 and arguably 32 times greater than you're seeing today, and that's just for starters. So the amount that you have to manage is very, very complex. So when we're talking about this and this, this infrastructural environment, what does success look like? Well, actually, success is really straightforward. I mean, it is actually the ability of the IT to be there all the time. It's not acceptable any longer for people to say the computer's down. <coughs> and also to get the information when you want it. There's no point having something available all the time, but it's so slow, it's unusable. Likewise, there's no point in having something which is really quick, but isn't there all the time. As all of the information, all of the intellectual property is held inside the data, you've got to be able to secure it. And of course, with this massively growing environment, you've also got to manage it in a cost-effective